This episode of the Night Blog is brought to you by Queen Bee's AstroTurf. Only comes in yellow and with a free glass of lemonade. Greetings, greetings, fellow stargazers. Welcome back to Night Blog. It's been a while. What's your name? I have no idea. I can't remember. I have the amnesias. I have the, there's more than one? I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> That's a really bad prognosis. We have to, we're sorry. He has multiple amnesias. He might forget he has amnesia and it's going to be a great day. It's a wonderful day. Yeah. So, welcome, welcome. We are back. Yes. Back in action, would yes. you say? Is action the right word? I would say that. We're not in, 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 in action. We are in action. In action. The lack of action. So today, what we want to talk about, see, I, I, I would say that, that my, my forte usually falls into the music side. Yeah, I would say that. And your forte falls into the visual side. That's, I would say that as well. So, audio-visual, that's why we're we a good team. We complement each other. Yes. But uh, one thing that, just, it, 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 it's a mystery to me, mm. is music. Yeah, you brought this up to me the I, other day. Yes, yeah. we were talking about this. Oh, this would be an interesting conversation to have, because I have, what I would say is, not only an unpopular opinion and view on music, but it's a wrong view on music. Because the moment I said it, and I warned you, it was going to be offensive to musicians. Mm. And the look on your face, which I'm pretty sure was genuine, yeah. when I said it, was look like, what the hell are you talking about? It was, I mean, it's, it's hard to be disgusted at an opinion because it's, it, it's, it's an opinion. But I was taken aback. Yeah. And it's, it's one that I know, like, it's not the correct view... I mean, maybe I didn't word it right, but I, I looked at you and I said, for me, music is an ancillary experience. Hmm. It's subjective to what it, it's a subjective, not subjective. It is subjective. Yeah. It's supportive to another experience for me. Hmm. I can't listen to music for the most part. Very few songs can I listen to music and appreciate the music aspect of it. Sure. I do. I do. But. To me, it's always to serve some other purpose, to build up another... Like, for me, it's it's to build up movies. Right. The, the scene in a movie, the tone of a movie. And when I listen to music, I imagine scenes from movies. Not just some specific movies. If I'm writing something for my own edification, I'll mm -hmm. listen to music so that way it can get me in the mood to write whatever scene or sequence or thing that I want to write. Because that's how I view music. It's ancillary to that. Okay. So, the idea of music in general... I like it. Okay. I don't, it's not I don't like it. Okay. It's just, I, for whatever reason, I cannot appreciate it on its own. Does it's that very mean, hard for me to appreciate it on its own. Does that mean a medium like television or movies are more poignant to you when there is no music? No. They're better when there is music. But the music itself, I have a hard you time... You think it, has, it comes after the fact of... It, it has to be intertwined with it. It's, it's as important uh -huh. as everything, but... I, it has to be intertwined with that. Okay. That's just... It's hard, I, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying this is how I experience this thing. So, recently, you had said on social media, uh, which surprised me, because I've never really heard you talk about music, really, at all. I saw you mention John Williams. And the, the reason yeah. that it was normal to me is because you're such a Star Wars fan. Yeah. And you were talking about Star Wars and hoping that he gets really let loose in that Oh, movie. yeah. And I you know, was thinking about John Williams' past and how... There is just, I mean, he's the icon man. When oh, you think yeah. back and you know, if you're not listening to Harry Potter, you remember Jurassic Park, you remember Jaws, you remember Star Wars, you, everything, E.T. Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones, yeah, basically everything. He's written a theme to that, even sometimes I think about E.T., and I can remember a couple one-liners, but I remember the music. Or yeah. Jurassic Park, like, I remember the music. And you, those moments didn't exist without John Williams' score. No, that is absolutely correct. And even, I mean, two... I guess an equal extent Star Wars. You know, there were certain scenes, especially in the opening scenes, just that opening crawl, how it is. Yeah, the it triumph. Is exactly like, it's that. exactly what it needs to be. And and I think that that's fanfare. probably what leads to my view of music in that way. Hmm. Because, like, the, th the first themes I grew up loving, that wasn't just, like, actual scores, not just the, the music my mom would have me listen to mm -hmm. in the car and whatnot, would be the John Williams. That definitely wasn't doing it for me. The what? music I was listening to in the car. I think it was Gaither Vocal Band. I think we it was Amy Grant. We grew up in Christian households. It was Amy Grant Amy was a Grant, rock star. Newsboys. Oh, Newsboys were rock to? stars. I think was that the only term I knew. Those rock stars. I was actually offended by DC Talk. <gasps> 
they were edgy. <laughs> they were edgy. They were on and MTV. Like, here's the thing. My mom was the one that tried to introduce it to me, and I felt like, no, this is not good Christian music. This is this is evil. And mom's like, no, it's not. And it took me a little while to get over that, because that was not instilled to me by my parents whatsoever. I don't know where I came up with that from. Yeah, yeah. Maybe from church, because the church we went to growing up was a little bit more conservative before you came. Uh, <laughs> was, was that my fault? Did I do that? No, no, no. Oh, it's, okay. when, it's when we hired our new youth pastor. I see. The phrasing was before you came. Well, no, just because you came. I, I see what you mean. Like just the time. The, time the time when you time came. that I came. When we had like new view on, on music yes. and whatnot. Let me ask you a question. But, so, when you were to sit down and like listen to music, mm -hmm. playing during the day, your video editing, yeah, a good commercial, just picture, no music. And you listen to something. Well, I have to edit to music, though. I, I know, that's interesting. To it's me. weird. Do you ever get um, the chills? Like, when you hear something really good, does it like does it give you goosebumps? It gives, Do you me, get the... it gives me goosebumps, but then it also inspires me to think of something that would go along with that to enhance the goosebumps. Okay, but it fed that idea. Yes, yes. So it's not like music is... Secondary. I don't mean to say secondary. Uh huh. I I have to have it attached to something else. Okay. It ha and, it has to com be a companion to in your mind. In my mind. It has to be a companion to something visual. So I was after we had this conversation. Not, not always visual, but a company to story. Okay. So like story. if you're listening to even if you're listening to a radio show, podcast or something, podcast like that. or like a story driven radio show, like the music to help set the tone and the mood. That's just uh -huh. how I encounter it. Okay. So I, after we talked, I was so, I just didn't expect you to say that when you brought it up as a topic. Yeah. I decided to like research, well I was like, well why do I like music so much? What is that feeling? And I kept every, every study, I know studies are, you know, studies, but so many studies have been yeah. done on music that everybody comes back to the same idea that it feeds into our pleasure center and our mm -hmm. amygdala because we can expect things and rhythms and what they call a groove and stuff that we find pleasurable by listening to. Is always, I don't know, uplifting in our video. That's why pop music is so repetitive because when you know what to expect and you can get to that point and there's kind of a groove to it, it feeds your amygdala and you kind of get that pleasure center. But that doesn't mean that there's always going to be, I think they're called fisons, is, is not only like uh, a certain percentage of people can get those chills from music. Like it's not everybody. Hmm. And they call it, uh, they call it skin orgasms. Uh, I'm having one right now. I'm always having one. Ooh. My life is intense. It's very. Uh, and, and messy. So I was thinking... Oh. Go on. I thought I was just sweating. <laughs> um. <laughs> when you bring up, like, a certain... Oh, I'm so sorry. I when went you, there. When you bring up a certain, like, video game. Yeah. Like, if you were to bring up Banjo-Kazooie or something like that, you think, you know, Grant Ocarina Kirkhope's music or Ocarina of Time. Like, that is iconic music to Yes, me. one of the most iconic soundtracks of all time. And it fed into even more iconic soundtracks as they just built upon it and became more symphonic with it and everything. So, you know, I always relate those to it, and especially for me, one that gives me the chills like crazy is uh, Explosions in the Sky's soundtrack to Friday Night Lights. Okay. is so iconic and identifiable that I feel like anyone who has watched Friday Night Lights, if I just say to you, um, what is, the, oh, I can't think of the name of the song. Um, well, if I just, the theme song, and whenever it starts playing, you just get like those, what those is emotions. The, what is the theme song? I've never seen the show Friday, oh, Friday Night Lights. Night Lights. I, it's, it's ambient, like guitar, like delayed guitar and building and like, it's very is it epic. kind of like the um, Last of Us soundtrack, but not as dark and empty? Not as dark and empty. And The Last of Us, you know, Gustavo kind of did a lot of just single guitar stuff. Yeah. Like, they go into big builds and massive, like, breakdowns and everything. Um, but it's always behind, like, those scenes. And it just drives parts home. And it's so poignant and kind of depressing, but uplifting when good things... I don't know. The soundtrack is so good. And I... I always fed off of music like that, mm -hmm. where I would hear it, and in my mind I would think of, the same way you do, where I would think of what I wanted to do. If I wanted to write something specific, I'd have to listen to music to get me there. Yeah, you know? yeah. But I also see music as its own form of things a lot of the time, where if I can see the imagery, the music re relays that. To yeah. It? yeah. So like it's almost like it doesn't need anything else from me. I just need the music, and it does everything for me. And I think for musicians it does that. But you're the first one that's made me think, oh, not everybody's going to experience this song the same way I do, you yeah. know? And that reminds me of like when we were writing an album for a company, like the one that was downloaded the most was our least favorite song they chose to put on the track. Because <laughs> we, we put one out there and we were like, we don't really like that one. And they put it on the record anyways. 
and then it comes out and it was our number one song. We're like, oh, darn it, like we have bad taste. <laughs> <laughs> But maybe of good taste, just you know, it's indie good taste. Indie. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You Exclusively know. to that yeah. small sect. Yeah. Um. But the good thing is, and what I gathered from all this is, you still need me. You still want me to give you my my musical life. Yes. But you just think I am ancillary. So. Not you personally. Oh no, I I understood what you were saying when you said music. I <laughs> knew you meant J. Michael Keebs. Maybe. What do you think about music? I mean, that's a really broad question. But that answer, is very broad. What do you What do you think about music in general? Because also, one of the things I also told you is how antagonistic I am to new music. Oh yes, you said you only listen to two people. There's like two bands. It was. There's it's Ben Folds, Cake, mm. and I've actually added a third that I'm exploring right now. Whoa! Stop the person. I'm really liking it. I'll, I'll like I'll latch on to songs, but then I'll I'll try to like. Listen to other stuff. Like, I just like that one song of theirs, but this one I'm liking more and more, and I think you'll be proud of me for this. Imagine Dragons. I like Imagine Dragons. I, I, what song brought you in? Believer. Oh, okay, good song. Um, but then there's also the other songs that I realized that was them that I didn't know was them. Yeah. Which is um, I Bet My Life. Okay. Which you've heard in so many movie trailers. Oh my gosh, everything. Like if it's supposed to be in, so, like an inspiring moment in a movie trailer of like a teenager running to find his light purpose in life. <laughs> That is a terrible rendition of that song. I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> so, the last the last point I had was movie trailers, especially and recently. So let's take music as a whole out of it, but let's put in musical ideas and theory and rhythm and <clears> things <throat> happening now. And every trailer has to be to a specific beat per minute and to a rhythm. Mm -hmm. So if the drums are doing like a dun 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 dun, dun ever the the guns are doing it in like a Mission Impossible trailer or even in the Rogue One trailer, yeah, it was doing it to the beat. That it was doing the Imperial March kind of remix with the alarm going on. I love that. It was very so cool. cool. But every trailer does it now. So it's almost like music has become more integral in ways that is trying to like bring people in. But it's interesting, trying to get your attention. The music has gone up in trailers while like the inner world has gone down. That's true. When is the last time you've heard a voiceover in a movie trailer? On movietrailers.com. No, I mean like in a current movie I know. trailer. I like, it's been a long time. Honestly, you only hear them on the radio. Like, if you're listening to where there's going to be... Like, Which, an advertising a movie on the radio, it just seems weird to it me. It is very odd. But, like, when you listen to podcast stuff on Spotify, if you listen to free or anything like yeah. that, it'll just come up and be like, he was a cop, now he's disgruntled. Doesn't that suck? And you're like, oh, <laughs> well, yeah, it kind of does. Yeah, I'll watch that. <laughs> disgruntled cop. <laughs> now on Hulu. Who's, who's the, most, who's the like, most sour actor I can think of? Off the top of my head, uh, like Mark Wahlberg? No, no, it's got to be an older guy that just is... Oh, like a grizzle. Played by Dennis Quaid. Just, <laughs> I'm angry. And it's just him. It's not like he has to go on a journey. He's just... It's put, it's, he's yeah, putting in his days till retirement. It's Dennis Quaid and Jack Nicholson. And they're just very old. I was two days from retirement. Okay. If you have any opinions on music, like or me. on how crappy movies are without music, uh, like what we do... Or dislike what we do and give us a comment that says why you dislike or like what we do. Hard Candy, I think, is a movie that doesn't have any music in it except for the end. And I've never Amazing. seen it. Oh my gosh, you will. It, it is ball clenching. I'm not just going to leave it at that. What? No, Hard Candy, it's what I got Ellen Page noticed. Um, oh, I know what you're talking about. Where, like, she's lured into this guy's house and he's a predator, but then 20 minutes into the film, she drugs him, and she's actually the predator. Right, that does sound good. And then he, like, at one point she is, like, pretending to castrate him. And Where does the candy happen? There is no candy. I don't know why it's called hard candy.